of all the boats at this year's Southampton Boat Show, this is probably the one I've been looking forward to the most. This is the Archipelago 47, built entirely from British aluminium in cows, using the design input from Chartwell Marine, who have years of dedicated commercial workboat heritage behind them. And when you look at it, you have to say it has that kind of semi-commercial aesthetic, that almost warship aesthetic with that low profile roof line and those elevated hull side, not to mention the colourways. It looks absolutely superb from the outside. And I cannot wait to jump on board and have a closer look. There's a lovely wide open aft transom with steps sorry, built into sorry, the port to, side. But as we step on board here through the starboard side gate, you're greeted with a nice big expansive single level aft deck lined with flexi teak here for ease of maintenance. We do also have a uh, port side gate but that hasn't yet been uh, fitted because of time constraints. In tandem with a lot of the boats here at the show the guys at Archipelago have been up against it to bring this boat number one to this event. But the moment you step on board I have to say Given that it's a boat number one and was finished about 10 hours before the show actually kicked off, the quality of finish here is actually very, very impressive. If we open up this port engine hatch, you'll see, first of all, there's tremendous volume down in here, loads of space to step down those steps and do any basic maintenance you need to while you're underway. It's interesting to note, actually, that this particular boat is rigged with a pair of Iveco 450 horsepower diesels on straight shafts. Even in that configuration, it's a, a pretty long distance boat. You can expect around about 2,000 nautical miles potentially if you operate at displacement speeds. You can also cruise at around about 18 knots or you can hit in the region of 25 knots at the top end. But what's particularly good here is because of the zoned spacing of these aluminium hulls. I mean, this particular boat has twin thousand litre tanks, but you could easily expand that to a pair of two thousand litre tanks. Combine that with 120 horsepower diesels and you can easily expect ocean crossing range with plenty to spare. As things stand, you'll see we've got freestanding furniture in this aft cockpit. But because this boat is built entirely from aluminium, of course, it's very easy to spec additional units. If you want inbuilt seating, for instance, on the aft end of that pilot house, that's easily done. But one of the key features you notice here in this aft cockpit is the fact that those elevated hull sides, and these steps, lead up to very lofty walkways, very close to the roof line of that pilot house, and that generates tremendous space down below. You can see that if we open these stairs on the port side. There's an absolutely enormous storage space under that port walkway. Very practical for all sorts of gear. We also have a big wet locker behind this glass door in there. They're hanging your water sports gear and your various bits and bobs. If we make our way up onto this port side deck. It's tremendously wide, perhaps three feet at least. And we have guardrails, but nice low profile seafood ones, so we don't inhibit the view of those in that pilot house. We also have neat touches like this little bar to protect your aluminium from the lines rubbing. And if we look to the side here, we'll see a ladder for access to this enormous roof space. Now it might look like it's not, but actually this is still aluminium. It's a beautiful finish, they work very hard on that. But as I say, this is 100% aluminium, this boat. <laughs> and that roof space can be used in a variety of ways. We have here an enormous roof rack. I mean, you can, you can stick anything on there, from your sea kayaks and your stand-up paddle boards to your tenders. There's also space further aft for um, a tender and a crane. But you could also, if you wish, spec a load of uh, solar panels on this big flat surface so that when you come to anchor you don't have to run your generator to operate your various domestic systems. And of course, given the stability, the inherent stability of a proper cat like this, 
it's no problem at all to spec a flybridge up there as well. They don't actually have that available yet, but they do have preliminary designs available. And it'll all depend on whether the customer base wants that or not. So far, there's been relatively little interest according to the guys here, but it'll certainly be an option if required. And that's one of the chief benefits of 100% aluminium construction. As on that aft deck and elsewhere on this boat, because you're not operating with fixed fiberglass mouldings, it's very easy to adapt things to suit the individual and turn this into quite a bespoke custom boat. When you reach the bow space, it's very clear that they take their cruising dynamics very seriously indeed. On a lot of recent cats, we've tended to see the bridge deck drop down and fairly substantial accommodation, substantial mouldings in this forward part of the hull. But of course that compromises performance on the water because it starts to interact with the wave shapes and the swells causing impacts and slowing you down. So they've taken great care not to allow that to happen on this particular boat. And that makes good sense because this boat is not just a fair weather play thing with its commercial underpinnings. This is designed to cross oceans. They take their offshore performance very seriously as we'll see when we step inside to the helm station. Step inside the saloon and in spite of that robust tough guy exterior it's tremendously homely. First thing you notice though is the headroom as you can see from these guys. The headroom is superb, must be about six foot six, six foot seven in here. There's a couple of other things I really like about this space but first let's just have a look at a couple of the details. We have a full height fridge to port there and a big work surface to port above the L-shaped seating area down here. There will be storage built into this base, not yet, but there will be with pull-out drawers and so on to give you a variety of storage spaces so you can make it work for the way you like to cruise. And if you look over at the starboard galley, again, L-shaped, nicely mirrors the seating just opposite. <coughs> and it's very fully featured, it's very high class. We have a TV mounted up there in a good spot for those on this seating area behind me. We have drawers lining the top edge. They're push drawers so you don't have to use handles. Very nice movement, very high quality. And there's no storage beneath this level because of course that needs to be preserved to increase headroom in the cabin that's down below there. And the same goes for this side, beneath this work surface, you'll find the owner's cabin in that porthole. We'll have a look at that in a second. But the two things I really like in this section, aside from the headroom and the general space on offer, firstly is the wood. Now this is oak and it feels tremendously natural and organic and the reason for that is that rather than darken it give it a kind of artificial orange glossy feel the guys here have chosen to use a kind of whitened lacquer it works an absolute treat it bounces the light around and it feels kind of bright and nordic and modern it's uh, it's a lovely choice second thing i really like and you don't often see this in houses or boats is the fact that these worktops here for the uh, starboard galley they come up round about just above my, my hip height which is really useful because it means that instead of having to kind of stoop down when you're at the, the work surface and kind of hurt my back it, it genuinely happens when I'm at home because I find the work surface is too low well that's amplified exponentially when you're out on the water and you're receiving those gentle impacts from the swells it kind of really wears on your lower back but this Apparently, according to the guys, they were, they, they, this is a deliberate choice. They all stood there and thought, well, how high do we want this uh, galley surface to be? So they've elevated it substantially, and it works an absolute treat. It's so comfortable to use. Ahead of this lovely saloon, the helm is also a pretty special place to be. For a start, we have these slots here. There will be blackout blinds fitted in here that slide right the way across to the other side and that enables you to shut the entire helm off from the after saloon so that when you're doing a bit of night nav you get proper visibility you can turn your red lights on and go about your business while people further after enjoying their party and at the helm itself we have 
a pair of banks of controls, a 24 inch screen directly in front of you. Plus, because this really, realistically, on most boats, even ocean crossing boats like this, tends to be the way people enjoy navigating, we've got a, a dedicated bracket for your iPad, so you can do it that way as well if you like. And then up above in Targa style, in proper workboat style, we have additional data displays that enable you to keep your eye on the water ahead without looking away or looking down. Now, Skipper's not left on his own. We've got a <laughs> pair of seats here to starboard at this elevated helm section. Plus, as you would expect on a boat built for serious long distance cruising, a genuine chart table. So that's a nice touch. So is the inverted screen. I and mean, the visibility all around is extremely good, both from this helm and from the saloon. And the skipper's chair is a thing of beauty, it really is. It's got a fold down footrest there. Nice big armrest. <laughs> I've, I've sat in there for 20 minutes or so waiting for the crowds to disperse a little bit. It's deeply comfortable. And that's basically where you'll sit if you're on watch on a long cruise, taking it easy. If you're actively helming the boat, you tend to stand down in this space and hold on to the wheel. Either way, it's very comfortable, beautifully put together with plenty more of this lovely white lacquered oak. And it provides, as you would hope on a boat that's built for serious ocean crossing, everything you need, but absolutely nothing you don't. In this particular configuration, the owner's cabin down in this port hull is also a major surprise. As I say, it might have those commercial underpinnings and that semi-commercial kind of aesthetic from the outside, but when you step inside, it's absolutely beautiful. And you have to keep reminding yourself, this is boat number one. We have a permanent double bed there in the aft section of the hull with lovely walnut trim all round and these beautiful sort of matte blue fabric. It contrasts beautifully. We also have a trio of enormous hull windows there for wonderful views from your bed. The headroom in here is fantastic. And actually the detailing is rather lovely too. There's something quite sculptural about these. It's a lovely, lovely touch at the bed head there. And as you move further forward, on the starboard side, we've got a, a nice little space for an office for a desk that's not currently there. But as I say, this is boat number one. There's plenty of storage too just ahead of that and these elegant little leather handles to open it up and good hanging space in there too plus a set of drawers lower down and as you move further forward again past these again very elegant little recesses built in to the walls there we reach the bathroom and this is where you see it taking up the forward parts of the hull as it begins to taper we have the toilet down there Again, we have just an absurd amount of headroom. I mean, look at that. That's got to be at least seven foot, probably a little bit more than that. We have a good size of sink there with a very attractive view. I have to say, I might, if we were underway, find myself quite mesmerized by this, just watching the water interact with that hull. I think I'll spend some good time here just looking at what's going on. And then forward again to a separate shower compartment which must be about six feet long with shelves on either side. It's easily big enough for two people to enjoy a shower in the morning simultaneously. It's a wonderful space, a deeply uncompromising space. If you're a selfish owner like me, then you would absolutely spec it like this. But of course, it's very custom friendly. So you could have two separate cabins in this port hull just as we do in the starboard hull. And we'll pop over to the starboard hull right now to take a look at that. As you can see, the accommodation in the starboard hull is not yet complete. But that's quite interesting in its own right. If we move forward, you can see we have a good space for a twin cabin up here. Actually, no, I'm wrong about that. This will be, because it's narrower than the aft one, this will be the bunk cabin. And you have twin windows that mirror those on the porthole, obviously. If we move further aft, 
there's a big, big shower room amidships to separate the fore and aft cabins for a bit of extra privacy. That's shared between the two. And then the aft cabin. This has the extra breadth, so this will be rigged as a twin. And of course you can choose to mirror this layout in the port hull if you want, so that you're able to accommodate eight people in four cabins without actually compromising any of those uh, forward quarters of the hulls. And again here, just as in the master cabin, in the porthole, we have a trio of really impressively large windows for plenty of light and fantastic views, plus a hatch opening onto that starboard side deck up above. Now, the owner of this company and the builder of this boat is a huge fan of brands like Nordhaven and Fleming. He loves the idea that you'll be able to cruise at displacement speeds in tremendous comfort with relative efficiency in big waters and not worry about it, keep your family safe. But, as the dad of four kids, he also wants to be able to blast out to a relatively remote beach and have his fun and get back to the same day without taking hours and hours over achieving that. And obviously this boat achieves all of that. But it's not just him who's really excited by this. This boat has been full of people, as you can see. Walking around the boat for the past two days, so many people, it's actually been difficult to get a spot to get on board and make the filming. But I've listened to what those people are saying, and yes, they find it different but they also find it tremendously exciting to the point where I'm seeing a lot of people lamenting the fact that perhaps they can't quite afford one. Well, if you look at the prices, it seems to me almost absurdly good value. I think the price starts at the moment from 1.1 million plus VAT, and this particular boat will be uh, sold as an ex-demo boat in June or July 2023 for about 900,000 pounds plus VAT. But even if you take the financial uh, issues right out of the equation and think about the boat alone. What we have here is undoubtedly one of the most exciting and diverting and unique boats at the Southampton Boat Show and for me a name that we absolutely need to keep an eye on.